Welcome. I'm going to go through Lightroom versus Astra Toaster. I've uh, been asked which do I think is better given I've just put up a video on uh, an automatic workflow end to end of clicking a shutter and Lightroom picks up the image automatically and adjusts it using a preset stretch straight away. So very, very quick to, to see. Um, I guess I'm going to cop out a little bit here and it's in this first word right here, experience. Um, I suppose it depends on your own experience, how, uh, how much prowess you have in moving sliders around and stuff, but also your experience with the product. Um, and I've only just started using Lightroom for this, so I haven't shot many targets with it and I need to get a bit of experience with it first before I really say one's truly better than the other. Second is cost. Uh, Lightroom cost me 170 Australian dollars at Officeworks. Uh, Astro Toast is free and features. Um, well, I think Lightroom's got heaps more features than Astro Toaster, but you know, does that make it more complicated to use um, compared to Astro Toaster? Mm, maybe. Um, but the bottom line is this statement right here. Haven't really had enough time with Lightroom to tell, but in this video I'll show you the differences that I've seen straight up. It may help you make up your mind whether you want to get into it or not and use uh, Lightroom. So let's kick off. Here we go. Okay. So um, you can see it's a modded camera. This is one of my first attempts at wide field through a Sigma lens. Straight up, it has weird chromatic aberration in that Sigma lens. You can see right uh, behind my cursor there. If I just move it down a tad, I have kind of like purple stars. It's got a weird chromatic aberration, which I'm sure you can fix if you really know how to use Lightroom. But uh, yeah, if you see purple stars coming up, it's not Lightroom's fault. It was happening in Toaster, Astro Toaster as well. But anyway, here's the first point. A RAW, which this is, a RAW 18 megapixel file, will take about, mm, I'd say, 90 seconds, 60 seconds to appear in Astro Toaster. It takes that long on my MacBook, probably not on yours if you've got a better one than I've got, but on my very old MacBook, uh, which has been boot camped, it takes about 60 seconds minimum for an 18 megapixel RAW picture just to appear. Uh, and I don't mean from clicking the shutter, I mean once it's saved in the folder, Astro Toaster has to get DSS Live or something to star count and register and all that kind of stuff. And it takes about 60 seconds just to appear in the viewing window. In Lightroom, it takes about 4 seconds before it pops into view. Okay, so straight up, it's much faster to load into Lightroom. Next, uh, color balancing. There is no histogram in Astro Toaster, and to manually move the red, green, and blue sliders, I really struggle trying to color balance a raw file. But um, you can see over here, there is a eyedropper tool in uh, Lightroom, which is much easier to use. Um, two things to note as I'm about to move it. Number one, you can see right here, that is effectively digital grey scale which is what's used to color balance cameras these days. So if I can find a pixel in here that is that color then I've got it perfectly color balanced. But secondly way over, I'm going to try and move it over this way, way over here is a preview window and as I move the white balance dropper over this main image on the right here, this will change to preview and show me instantly what it's going to look like with the color balance, right? And here we go. So as I move it over here, right? Have I selected that yet? No, sorry, select. Here we go. See me moving it and the image on the upper left changing to show me the effect of the color balance in if I click in that area. See, it's just just changing slightly and flicking to the different colors. Well, I'll move down to the tree. So that's that's like a green tree, but it takes 
The main thing I want to show you is it doesn't make an awful lot of difference where you click. Look, that's a green tree there. And, whoops, I don't want it to do there, but you can see it's pretty well color balanced anywhere there. If I move over here towards what would have been dark sky, you can see it's showing, oh, that was actually quite not, oh, it's probably a little bit red. See the preview way on the left? Move it a bit to the left, it goes nicer and sort of gray. If I move up to the nebula, same difference. It's kind of always showing a pretty decent color balance, no matter where I put it. So what am I saying? I'm saying you can pretty well drop the thing anywhere just grab that color balance tool and go oh gee uh, you know gray nebula you know here's black nebula here's probably the grayest it's gonna get down here is black stars so probably anywhere here right click boom it's done <laughs> okay if I really want to go to town I use that picker and try and find a pixelated square let me show you what I mean see that to the right says pick a target neutral so and there's a few gray bits around there actually so what would I say is roughly neutral gray very tough to move the mouse sort of to match this tiny little um, square you only have to move it like a fraction and it changes so you know you can go nuts here trying to find the right square to color balance which is why I tend to say look kind of don't worry too much about it just you know pick a spot and you know just click it <laughs> so in effect very quick you just click that tool click it kind of anywhere where you think it would be kind of not pitch black and you will get a decent color balance so very quick to color balance next um, I found the workflow in this the best thing to do next is to adjust the black point and there's a wonderful tool in here to do that you hold the alt key down and then grab the slider which is what I'm doing now see how it changes to an inverted image now when you see weird dots appear like this see that appearing that is data that will be clipped if you moved the black point to there so you don't want to clip data so you back it off until you see all those dots disappear like a couple of dots left, couple of dots left, couple of dots left there okay you can do the same with whites only this time it shows you uh, stuff that's overblown stuff that would be too bright if you were there so that's already overblown so you want to kind of like I tend to find what we did the other night get rid of those blue ones and just leave a couple of white ones like get rid of that really big blue one well that's all the way anyway there it is next I found uh, to do the exposure now you can use the alt with this but I find it's better not to uh, just adjust the exposure down until you see two things you either look at the picture or you can see it moving up here in the histogram oh by the way uh, that yes you've got histograms on backyard EOS and sharp cap and other uh, programs APT but you don't have one in Astro Toaster and I don't have one in Canon EOS utility well kind of do but uh, I have to kind of shoot a test shot there to see it so straight away I can tell I have got enough exposure time here because I've got see I'm, there's the left hand edge of the histogram and there's the left hand edge of the histogram hump so that gap there means I took it at a long enough exposure or high, high enough gain or both to have plenty of data and I haven't got too much of a lot of data up here which I've been missing as well so it was a good exposure anyway as I move the exposure you'll see this move over towards the left and again you don't want to clip data so if I'm looking at that you're probably going to say that's a tad now once you get there you can use the arrows to move it so that's probably as good as I'm going to get the next thing I found which was really simple to change or next is this presence clarity so if I pop that to the right ok 
okay it stretches the curve you can see it up here stretching the curve um, I'll, I'll do it really savage see the curve stretching okay and if ever you make a mistake you can either double click the name and it resets that slider or you can control Z to undo the slider or let me just shut presets on the left down here might as well get rid of that collections see this history this is a history of all the adjustments you made and you can see there I moved the clarity plus 20, uh, 37 making the overall total 37 and then I moved it to plus 26 making an overall 63 then I double clicked the name to undo it so it did a minus 63 to get it back to zero and again you can see this preview as I hover over each one it's showing you like if you wanted to undo that step what would it, you you'd get back to that if you wanted to undo that step you'd get back to that undo that step you get back to that and so on and so on so it's it's pretty handy way of working out um, what to undo if you know what I mean anyway clarity let's just pop it a little bit more that'll do the image is sort of pretty well done at that point almost um, but what else can you do with it well suppose you had uh, vignetting going on well you come down here to a lens correction and if profile is clicked it tries to read the profile of the lens it doesn't know about a sigma lens so it didn't show it but if you go into manual you've got this lens vignetting thing down here and it works extremely well uh, I'll zap it right over to the right you can see what it's done to the edges brightened them right up so that's the opposite of um, you know, what I really want anyway but that's what vignetting would look like very dark edges um, I'll move it back to the middle um, well double click but this midpoint changes um, sort of the diameter of that midpoint so it's a very so if it's tiny or big okay it's a very cool vignetting tool I'll just reset that and take it off so lens vignetting very easy to do um, uh, what else have I got oh um, obviously you can see as I hover over these a grid appears and this rotates so you can rotate the image somewhat okay um, get out of there uh, detail is noise great sharpening tool great noise reduction tool so noise reduction it shows you a picture you can drag it around to a spot that you can see has lots of noise or click on this okay and wherever you point you can see that image on the right moving so you find a nice spot full of noise uh, probably down where it's a bit darker uh, no, probably go okay. here it's not a lot of noise with this actually let's just click there and then you move the noise reduction and um, you don't see a lot changing in that you can really go savage on this and I haven't read up on YouTube or anything any of what are these other things do detail and contrast so I just bang it across it doesn't seem to destroy anything at all it just really smooths it out very well I tend to look over here at the image rather than this but um, it's you know, it's really smooth sharpening is really good you can really savagely move it and it doesn't really pixelate things over here here looks pretty rubbishy but over here it looks pretty cool with the sharpening you don't notice it um, so there's that uh, so vignetting sharpening uh, noise reduction oh the um, all of those tools in Astro Toaster um, especially if you like the lens gradient and um, sky gradient you have to move the slider select the angle or percentage you want then you've got to click apply gradient and it takes 10 to 15 seconds before it applies uh, as you just saw it's all instantaneous with this uh, oh, speaking of sky gradient I also have real trouble in Astro Toaster working out it's just me I'm a dummy I have trouble working out which angle I'm supposed to use that on and I often move at 50% and really don't see much of a gradient change anyway uh, but this tool's easy it's up here okay and I'll click it it shows a new grid um, with 
these sliders on it and just make sure that says new when you get in there if it doesn't click new um, how does it work if I I can go at any angle so if I start here well, well let me show you uh, now I really want this to be the opposite of a sky gradient I want this stuff to be lighter and pop more and it's still to be dark down here so I'm going to go the opposite way like this All right, see what it's doing ok now I probably want to finish it about there so this is going to make starting at this extreme edge here it will apply any changes more aggressively up here and slowly fade it down towards where I finally unclicked or released the click so if I go over here to exposure and move it to the right you'll see this get lighter and that'll stay pretty dark here we go see that okay and maybe make a bit of uh, contrast here okay um, the alt key works here too if I move to the center and press alt then as I move left and right it moves whatever sliders I've moved sort of uh, less aggressively or more aggressively so if I move it to the left see it moving down if I move it to the right see that Okay. Next, um, well, that's pretty much that shot done. Uh, but anyway, uh, the way you kind of save this is to click New again. Okay, and you can see that dot remaining there to kind of tell you that it did it. But obvious, and you can start another one now. If I happen to, I'll show you what I mean here. If I drag that up, you can drag it at any angle and it'll just, you know which angle it goes because wherever you release it, remember, it's going to apply anything more aggressively here, less aggressively there, okay? But if I just say, no, don't worry about that, click New, then click Close, and you're out of that tool. So, pretty sweet. And again, applies instantaneously and you can put multiple ones in there uh, for instance um, if I did have sky glow I would drag one up from the bottom uh, I might as well show you so I click that tool again say there was sky glow here and it was nice and dark there I'd go like that and I'd say I want this darker so I come over here and reduce exposure watch the image on the left and get rid of that sky glow see what I'm doing okay I'll just double click there to get rid of it click new because I really don't want to do that that looks fine so you can see um, I've been waffling on while I'm doing this but there's not that many sliders uh, to adjust to reiterate you click on that eyedropper tool and click pretty much anywhere on here to change the white balance even if it's a modded camera it'll do a great job to white balance then you, well, I'll sort of show you. So that's the first tool to use. Then hold the Alt key down and adjust blacks and whites. Then adjust exposure to get the sky dark somewhere. Adjust the clarity to make things pop a bit. That's a stretch. This clarity widens, keep, keeps this kind of pinned, but white, the edge is pinned over here on the left, but widens the curve. It's a really neat stretch. Um, and then you just think about your vignetting and other things. So vignetting is a lens correction. Okay, you adjust vignetting if you want to. You think about your detail, which is your sharpening noise reduction. I don't know what these other radius, well, I can guess what radiuses and that do, but I haven't used them yet. I just find bang and noise reduction and sharpening across fixes things. And the last thing, of course, is a sky gradient, which I just showed you, which is much easier to use than the one in Toaster and applies instantaneously. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, oh, apart from what I kind of demoed in my video, which is every single thing that I've done, I can, I don't know what that snapshot is, I can save as a preset okay and in fact I've got some presets saved there and you can see again the previews up here 
as I go through, that one obviously didn't do color balance, it must have been for an unmodded camera. This one was obviously for modded. That one actually does a fantastic job. Have a look at the preview up there. Whatever I'd mucked around with in that one worked really well. This one's called Easy Nib, obviously an unmodded camera. That one's obviously an unmodded camera. That one is as well. It's a weird colour. That one's obviously for a modded camera. And so forth. And that's also pretty darn good, that one. Called Wild Wide Field. But it's a different ISO 1600. Well, well that's why that one's working. That's ISO 1600, 30 seconds. This shot over here, just above the cursor, says ISO 3200. Remember the other one was 1600, so this is double the gain and about half the exposure time. That's why that colour balance there works. But yeah, you save it as a preset and away you go. Now obviously you don't or you shouldn't do too many adjustments um, because not all will apply, like that vignetting and uh, sky glow gradient. You, you think about it, that would be different in every shot, so you don't want to save that in a preset. A preset for a particular gain and seconds would probably just be color balance. Um, you probably don't even want to, well, you could set the black point and the white point if you're going to shoot every image at that uh, setting, but uh, you probably just want a color balance and then you saw how quick and easy it is to using the Alt key to black point, white point, and then also the clarity, which is a stretch and the exposure, I mean really doesn't take long to click on those sliders and instantly see what you're doing and um, the lens corrections should you need to use them um, yeah so there you have it um, I'm just going to click on that and just go to the left a bit to drop exposure yeah there you have it um, so yeah it's it's very quick to make adjustments the questions I have when I said earlier I haven't used it a lot on many targets is um, I haven't and I you know I don't really know what it does to um, like really faint galaxies and other bits and pieces oh one other trick though with which I can foresee coming up with galaxies is this tool here this is a brush tool so if I click it like the um, this one, the um, sky gradient tool, it gives you all the sliders, okay, ready to go. Um, don't know why this is automatically saying five, but anyway, um, oh maybe if I click new, no, it stays at five. I don't know why that is, but they should be zero. I would have thought, but anyway, once you click that, um, what happens is if I move over here, you get a radius bullseye the effect being strongest in the middle and fades out at the edges until right at the edge it um, hasn't changed anything. You can change that radius down here with the size, feather, I think you can use, yeah, use the mouse scroll button as well. Okay, now what does it do? It does the following. Let me say, let me suggest I'll bump the exposure up so wherever I brush it's going to make things a lot brighter. Okay, so if I come over here and I just do a little kind of circle there, look at it, see what it's doing? <laughs> so you can kind of brighten up the area where the galaxy is and leave everything else kind of untouched. Obviously you wouldn't do it as much as I just did. You'd, you'd have a much finer um, sort of size dot and go a lot less aggressively or maybe you just bump the contrast up and give it a wiggle in that area to make the galaxy pop but again instant really really quick is it post processing well in a way Astra Toaster and Sharp Cap and all those tools are effectively post processing but exactly like Sharp Cap and Astra Toaster in a fully automated work workflow this is doing nothing different. You've taken the shot in a acquisition program and now you're adjusting it in an automated fashion out there in the dark while you're actually viewing with your camera. 
Uh, and of course, don't do that by the way, control Z. There it is, it's gone. So, extremely quick and easy to use, but I just haven't had enough experience with, um, you know, really faint stuff, etc. But it shows really great promise. Plus, my final comment on this is I really like the you know like the maximum I'll go is 60 second single images and and uh, my favorite is a 30 second single image and I like that because even with DSS live doing the stacking which is faster than Astro Toaster's stacking 50 uh, per well half yeah 50 percent faster um, it you know, if you were shooting four second shots, it's still going to take 30 seconds to stack each frame. And, you know, four seconds doesn't get you a lot of data. Um, even if you shoot, um, you know, um, seven of them, it's going to take uh, three and a half minutes before you see it versus taking a single 30 second shot. <laughs> and you're getting just as much data and uh, you can reduce the noise really quickly in this. So for me, uh, it means if I like single shots, I don't need DSS Live to stack. Uh, the denoise tool is notorious or famous. Maybe that's the right on the internet. The denoise in this is famous for being really good, really good. They, some, a lot of people prefer it over Photoshop's denoise tool. So given that, say, with single shots, I don't need DSS Live, I can use proper MacBook software because Photoshop runs on a Mac, as does my Canon EOS utilities to control the camera. So I can have a MacBook out in the field uh, running native, um, you know, the OS X, which is really fast on that old MacBook of mine compared to running Windows boot camped on it and um, just use the uh, MacBook version of VOS Utilities running automatically uh, loading images instantly almost into Lightroom and applying the white balance color instantly for my modded camera and uh, as I said before the adjustments which you'd then be doing just like you were doing them in Astro Toaster only you've got much better control so I really like the idea, the sound of using Lightroom in this workflow. Oh, by the way, one last thing. Uh, this isn't the full screen. Shift tab will get you full screen, but I can't do that because ShareX, my desktop software, uses that to turn on and off. I'm going to have to change those settings. Uh, there is another one. I can't remember it. It's like Control Shift F or something. But basically, you can see up here that up arrow will hide this menu bar so here we go this one over here will hide this and this one down here will hide this and I'm going to show you a zoom, a zoom. Right. and that hit the right but you can see if you if you want to use something you just flick over here and it's up you can use it you don't have to click that to turn it on again you just hover over on the right anywhere on the right and this appears you can use it move the mouse away and it disappears just like on the left you just hover over there and there it is uh, hover over there and there it is okay so uh, zooming that's right um, oh firstly this is the wrong kind of direction orientation if it was a horizontal you'd see a bigger picture you know the, the long edges would be right up here and this um, short edge would be here so it'd be about where I'm waving the mouse quite a big image okay but to zoom in you come over here this is under fit at the moment but if you come over here and like click one is to three boom you zoomed in oh I've still got that bloody tool um, I've got a oh shit shouldn't have done that <laughs> control Z uh, go and turn that off uh, new close well click new again so it's got nothing close and it should be right now so here we go so zoom around and uh, you know there you go you want to go back to full screen just click fit if you want to really zoom in that was one is to three so 
probably one is to two. Boom, that's really zoomed in. Okay, and you can see some sort of weird noise going on there, can't you? But it's not that bad, to be honest with you. Um, anyway, you get the gist. Um, I think that's pretty much everything to show you. So, just minimise that. Uh, this is really it. I really haven't had enough time to really tell, but geez, those things are fast to apply. It's going to be much faster, in my opinion, than using toaster. As I said, just to load a 30 second single frame into toaster takes around 15 seconds if it's small JPEG and around a minute if it's a full size raw 18 megapixel file. So wait sort of 60 seconds to see the image before even starting adjustment or see it in like one or two seconds already white balanced and then start just doing those quick and easy adjustments with um, white point black point with the alt key to show you that you're not clipping data and um, then just the exposure and the clarity which is a stretch and if you see vignetting the vignetting tool just instantly applies if you see um, sky gradient that thing instantly applies and it's really sweet and easy to use uh, you know the direction it's headed, you know exactly what it's going to do, you can, can control the aggressiveness. You can undo each of those in steps using that um, history or undo the whole lot by uh, just doing Control Z or reset the slider back to its default zero position by double clicking the name. So it's very quick and easy to use in my opinion, I just haven't used it on things like galaxies and that. So thank you for watching, I hope you kind of accept that I can't really say one's better than the other at this point, but you've had a tour of the features, the key salient features that I'd be using for EAA with Lightroom. It's, um, it's looking very promising and has the potential to be usable on a Mac at a, as a full end-to-end -end workflow uh, without DSS Live to stack of course. Uh, but I'm sure you could use wine tools as they call it to containerize the Windows DSS Live. I've just haven't tried that out yet. Okay, thanks for watching.